I am uh, Shahar Khan, Dr. Khan from Plastic Surgery. I have Tracy here with me and my former patient here. I won't mention her name and another patient to be uh, with us who's going to join us. Uh, she has good insight and experience of uh, an operating room at a major hospital here and so she's going to talk to us about uh, her experience. What I'm here for is essentially Tracy. She's a big voice, not only here in Michigan, but actually nationally and internationally. She's here to advocate for the patients who have implants and patients who want to get implants, who uh, our job is to educate so that they are very good informed patients so that they know what they're signing up for. And also we want to go ahead and shed some more light. So essentially this is going to be a question answer session and I'm going to have my uh, patients to kind of jump in and at least share their experience so that we can better the system and so that we can offer the best quality of care to our patients. We have a Facebook support page and on it a big debate amongst the women is do I do drains or don't I do drains and a lot of the posts are I'm not going to a doctor because he puts drains in or I'm not going to a doctor because he won't put drains in and so I was hoping you could clarify, like I used to be all pro-lift and now after hearing from you and other doctors, I can see why doctors don't feel comfortable doing lifts at the same time as end blocks. So I get it. So I'm hoping you can explain the drain sure. and, and, the, and all the pros and cons of drains. Sure, so drains are an important tool for us so that once we have done this dissection, which is the end block dissection where you're essentially removing the implant plus the capsule off of the chest wall and off of the pectoralis on the top, we have a lot of fluid that eventually builds up because of the nature of the dissection. Now, in, if the technique is done right, where you have a very nice, smooth, and like in a painting type of a painting type of a format dissection, very meticulously and nicely done in the avascular plane, the tissue that's traumatized is minimal, and so the bleed or the serous sanguineous discharge or the ooze that occurs as a result is much less than compared to let's say someone who does it technically very deficiently or incorrectly now you have tears in the chest wall that might ooze or in the capsule that might potentially ooze a little bit because you have gone into the capsule then you want to have drains so that they will collect that fluid to have drains is not going to prevent a hematoma. If you're going to collect a pool of blood inside the chest, the drain is not going to prevent it. If anything, it might alert you, but the blood gets coagulated. It forms a clot, just like jello, if you will. It cannot drain out of the drain. So the drains help with the fluid. Now, from my plastic surgery experience and as a board certified plastic surgeon, if I do an abdominoplasty, it's such a vast area from the xiphoid all the way down to the area of the pubic symphysis, it's a huge area. I not only put in one drain, but actually two drains because it's a huge area of the body. And I want to collect that fluid and I don't want it to build up because it can form a seroma, which is a collection of fluid. This is the fluid that builds up when you donate blood, the red blood cells settle down and then you have the plasma. We don't want that to build up. If the dissection, so 100% of the time when I do an abdominoplasty, I put in drains because that's the absolute standard of care. And I question the dog who does not put them in. Now conversely on the breast, when you do the end block removal, if you do it very nicely and meticulously as I want you to see on my YouTube channel, very carefully, very, you're handling the tissues like you're handling a piece of egg. You don't want to break into the capsule, very important you will notice even in the videos i mentioned that the section is very good i feel comfortable i gently pick up usually with my fingers because this is the softest area and i feel exactly how much i need to pull and push and it's a constant drive i have not had the need in 95 percent or 99 percent of the patients to put in a drain now if i ever am sitting on the fence do i or do i not i always put a drain in why because i can always remove it two days later now god forbid if I need or there is a collection of fluid that forms, I can always aspirate it, put a needle in after sterilely dyeing it and removing the fluid and sending it off to pathology because this fluid should not have accumulated because the body in itself absorbs that fluid. Less than 30 cc's as we all know from our surgical experience, the body itself will absorb. Now if I put it, pull out with the 
capsule 700 cc implant plus the capsule that's double the area that is going to produce more fluid so in that patient i will put in the drain because i want to be safe i don't want it to form a pocket where the fluid builds up and essentially it's a potential for infection to have drains in is a dangerous now if you need it you need it because you don't want that fluid to build up but to put it in for like I heard a patient just today come in and say that I'm gonna know I had my friend had drains for two weeks that's dangerous because the drain itself induces fluid number two let's say if you're sleeping and you twist and turn and the bulb suction goes off that fluid can backtrack or if you try to remove it and then you insert it back, you essentially reintroduce the bacteria into a nice, healthy, sterile pocket. And I just heard for the first time in my career that the husbands are removing the drains. Mm -hmm. I would call this very boldly and very safely malpractice. This is not safe. This should not be done. Removing a drain is a procedure should, which should only be done by an MD period, not even by a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant because it needs to be done very tactfully. If there is a clot, you have to examine, you have to feel the need that the drain needs to come out. If it was put in, why was it put in? You never go in around the axilla because that's where the lymphatic channels are. They can drain into and that's why when people and women have uh, mastectomy and uh, sentinel lymph node dissection almost always inevitably we put in a drain because of the nature of the dissection that goes.